Buzz my baby, buzz my baby, don't let nobody grab me. Nobody grab me. Hey friends, this is Christopher Davis shouting today. I'm going to show you how to play the 1924 Spencer Williams and Jack Palmer song, Everybody Loves My Baby. Now if this title and those two names seem a little bit familiar to you as viewers of this channel, it's likely because two years later they had another hit with the song, I've Found a New Baby. And that song probably happened because this one was such a major hit for Louis Armstrong in 1925. And when something works, you roll with that. So I have included in this version as well the original verse, which is still done quite frequently by traditional jazz bands around the world. If you'd like, you can skip to the end of the video, where as always, there is just a play along with the chord frames for you. But in the next few sections, I'll be breaking down every little bit of this tune so we can all play it together. The introductory verse of this song is 16 bars long, but the harmony really repeats twice, so we only actually have eight whole measures of music to learn. That's not so bad. And I will note before this, a lot of times this phrase is done in half time as to the rest of the song. Most of the song is very fast, and many times we'll do this at half that speed and then double time it as we get into the chorus. And we'll see with the play along later on exactly what I mean as I play it in that manner. So let me just play these eight measures for you while humming the melody so you can hear kind of how this fits together. The melody starts on your open A string. Ooh, and it's gonna sound a little bit something like this. Ooh, do, 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 do. note we'll just repeat that for the second half of the song. So what's happening here? So we're starting on a D minor chord. This song is in F, but we're starting out in the relative minor key or the minor key that shares the same key signature, but not the same tonic chord. So we're going to be starting on a D minor, two, two, one, open. And as we already know, our first melody note is that A. We're gonna strum this four times. And then we're gonna go down to an A seventh chord. Open, one, open, open, which we see a lot in D minor songs as this is our dominant chord. And this leads our ear right back to a D minor chord again. And in this third measure, depending on the version you are listening to, sometimes we will stay right on this D minor chord for four beats. But in a lot of the earlier versions, especially, this actually goes to a B flat seventh chord on beat three. So we would strum D minor twice and then go to B flat seven, barring over the first fret. And since I'm coming from D minor, I'll likely just keep my ring finger here, as that's a common tone, the same note that's shared between those two chords. There's no sense in really moving it. It makes it a much easier transition. But you can just play the D minor chord for this whole measure. Either works just perfectly complementing the melody, as the D and F in the melody are contained in both the D minor chord as well as the B flat seventh chord. In bar four, we're gonna go down to it back to our A seventh chord here. So here's our first four bars. It's gonna be D minor, A seventh, back to D minor. We can add that B flat seventh and then A seventh. Now for the next line, we're going to start with our D minor chord again. But instead of going directly to the A seventh after four beats, we're now going to go to that B flat seventh that we had talked about earlier, barring across the first fret. And I like to just leave that ring finger right there where it is for the D minor seventh. You can, of course, use a different finger if you would like. And we'll strum that four times. And then we're going to go to back to our D minor. And this time in the seventh measure, we will go back to that B flat seventh for two beats. It's optional in the first section, but I don't think I've really heard any recordings where in the second iteration of this um, melodic theme that we don't use the B flat seventh. And this walks directly down to our A seventh chord. And this is a very typical progression that you see our flat sixth to our dominant chord in minor blues songs, which this really is. So let's listen to these first eight measures, play it together, and actually we'll, we'll do this twice as that will give us the entire form that we need for the song. So it's gonna sound a little bit something like this. Two, three, four. Ooh, do, 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 
So that's the entire verse that we need, and we'll get to the lyrics later when we get to the play along. We don't want to learn all the music and lyrics at the same time. I just want you to hear how the melody fits along with the harmony. Now, as I mentioned previously, we would generally double time this when we get to the chorus of the song, which is now coming up, our A, A, B, A section. And to do this, we would be doing strict double time generally. So what that would mean is we'd be thinking in our heads, our pulse is this, right? Three. So we'd be thinking one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So we get this double time or an exact doubling of the time in here by counting those even eighth notes in our head to set up the rhythm for this faster section that's coming up now. So let's dig into the chorus of this song. The chorus of this tune is arranged in an A, A, B, A format with eight bar sections. So that means that we have quite a bit of repetition in here, but we need to know going in that actually our second A section is more of what we call an A1. It's a slight harmonic variation to help us set up the bridge. So all of these A sections, despite being melodically and harmonically similar, are not identical to each other. But our first and last A sections are identical to each other as far as the chords. The melody changes just a little bit in there. We're going to be starting out again in the relative minor. So on a D minor chord, you could play a D minor seventh here by putting down your pinky if you would like. And I find that although the chord isn't quite as stable in, on uke, it helps with the left hand muting. If you're doing a sort of normal swung strung with that left hand muting in there to give a little bit of space. And I'll link to a video down below on setting up some of these swing strums in case you're not used to it. So we're playing this D minor or D minor seventh chord now for the space of four measures or 16 total beats to begin this. And much like in the verse, our first melody note is that A and we're just really gonna walk down and up the chord. So it's all the chord tones that we're really singing here. So our first four measures are just D minor. Everybody loves my baby, but my baby don't love nobody but. Where do we go from here? Well, we said earlier we're in the key of F. So we want our resolution at the end of this to get us to F, which we actually haven't seen in this song yet. We have this very minor tone, and we're now going to resolve it and give it this happier major feeling. So in bar five, we're going to go to a G seventh chord, open two, one, two. We're gonna play that for one measure and then go to a C seventh chord. Now we can play this as three, open, open, three. Or we can play, of course, our, our just standard open, 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 one C seventh. They're all C sevenths, you have your options here. And that C seventh brings our ear right to our F major chord. So we have G seventh, C seventh, and just lands on F, but in this instance, because of where our melody is, our melody note that we land on is actually a D. So we're going to take this F major chord and make it an F sixth chord by adding a D on the C string. So if we have our F major chord down, open, uh, two, open, one, three, like this, we're just gonna take our ring finger and put it on the second fret of our C string. You might say to yourself, well, that's a D minor seventh chord. We just played that a second ago. But listen to it in context. When we have this 2 5 1, this G 7th to this C 7th here, it puts that same voicing in a totally different context and gives us the feeling of a major tonality as opposed to the minor that we had before. And this is why it really matters the context that chords are in as to what we call them. So let's listen to just this first eight bar section. So 
but you can hear when we come from that C7 to F6, it gives it a different sort of feeling. Now, we're going to be getting back to D minor for our second A section here, so we're going to throw a big old A7 at the end of this open one, open, open. You can always feel free to put the sharp five in there by placing your middle finger on the E sharp on the first fret of your E string. If you want to add a little tension and just scream, I'm going back to a minor chord here, the sharp five really helps with that. Now in the second A section, as I said, this is just a little bit different than we have in the first A section. Our first four bars are identical. We're going to play a D minor chord or a D minor seventh if you prefer. And then instead of giving this 2-5-1, this G seventh, C seventh to F, what we're going to do is we're going to stay a little bit with this, this minor tonality for a second. So after the first four measures of playing a D minor, we're going to go right to our A seventh for four beats, and then we're going to go to an E seventh for four beats. It's our dominant chord in the key of A, and directly back to our A seventh here for four beats, and then to our C seventh, which tells us that bridge is probably going to our F major chord. So let's listen to the second eight bars of the A section. You can hear what the changes are and what this sounds like. So again, we start out just on the D minor. Alright, so let's listen to both of the A sections together so that we can hear these changes. And I'll just hum a little bit of the melody so you can hear the, the context of the melody against the harmonies. So it sounds like this too. Here you go. our little A section and at the very end of the song we're going to repeat the first A section the one that resolves to the F and that's going to conclude the tune for us but now let's look at that B section and see what happens this B section is actually a lot of fun to me because although in the 20s and 30s we have a lot of stock bridges that were used these harmonic vehicles that we keep seeing cropping up like the one in five foot two where we have a three, six, two, five, or honeysuckle rows where we have one, seven, four, dominant two, five. We have these very common vehicles, but Spencer Williams did something a little bit funky here, and it kind of doesn't do exactly what we wanted to, but I'm also going to show you two different ways to address this because I've heard it many different ways over the years. I'll show you what's in the original sheet music and then kind of what's more the accepted harmony that most of us play today on the bandstand. And either is just as valid. Use your ear and decide, you know, what sounds best to you, because in the end, that's what matters. It's not my decision, it's yours. So at the end of the A section, we played a big old C7, which screams us, we're probably going to an F major chord here. That's our dominant chord. But instead of just going to an F, we're actually going to go to an F seventh chord. Two, three, one, three. So this already changes the harmony a little bit because it tells our ear that we're not just resting on this F chord. It sounds like it has motion in there. That's what dominant seventh chords tell us. They tell us that they're going somewhere. And usually this would go to a B flat chord. All right, so we're gonna play this F seventh for four measures or 16 beats. And this is where things change. So in the original music, we actually go to a B flat sixth chord in bar five, open two, one, one, for two beats, and then an F seventh, right back to it for two beats, and then to B flat, and then to G seventh. So we have this little change here, and let's listen to how this sounds. And this is the part that's changed most of the times these days. It's gonna sound like this. So here's from the beginning of the B section. And then after this G7, we're going to stay on that for one measure, that G7, one extra measure, and then we're going to go C7 for two beats and A7 for two beats. Of course, that A7 brings us right back 
to our A section again. So I'm going to play slowly for you just option one. This is the original way that this is played, and you'll hear this on a lot of the early recordings, but it started to fall out of favor pretty quickly in the 20s. So starting on our F7 chord. G7, C7, A7. All right, so we have that option, but what we hear more commonly these days is we don't actually go to that B flat seventh, which is what the F seventh tells us we want to do, but instead it messes with us and we just move that dominant chord up a whole step and go directly to the G seventh. And this is a fun little progression. I personally play it this way. I like it this way. And I'm gonna show you two different fingerings for that G seventh as well, because let's have some fun with it. Why not? So we play four bars that F seventh, and then what we're gonna do is just go to the G seventh for three measures now. All right, so 12 full beats before we go C seventh, A seventh, just as before. So we can play it like this. Right, we could do that, but here's an alternative way to play that G seventh. This F seventh we're on right now, is a move hole position. It uses four fingers, so we can put it anywhere we want. If we want to move it up a whole step, just move it on up two frets and we magically have this very nice G7 voicing. G7, but that sets us up that for that C7 and A7, maybe we can have a little bit of fun with it with voice leading and those inner voices. So we're on this G7 up here. What if we go down to a C7 that's close to that? We use the bar chord, bar cross your third fret, and then place a finger on the fourth fret, the E on your C string. As you see, that's the same voicing as your A7 that you play in open position all the time. We have this C7 here. And then for the A7, what we can do is we can actually play an A7 with a flat nine. And while that sounds like something super fancy, all we're gonna do is take the same voicing and put a finger down on the fourth fret, our C sharp on the A string. You see, this is the same voicing you play for diminished chords, but in this context, this is an A7 flat nine. And listen to how this changes the harmony and really leads the ear back to that D minor in the A section in a slightly different way. And this is a fun thing to play with. So here's the second option that we can use to play the A section when, with that, the B section, I'm sorry, with that second um, iteration of the G seventh chord. It'll sound a little something like this. So here, it leads the ear in a different way, and it's it's a little hip, and it's a little bit fun. So there's two options here that we can use on the bridge, and the play along, this is the one that we're going to use with the G7 chord. It's much more commonly accepted these days, but I think it's really important when we're learning songs to go back and see, you know, what the composer intended, and then what musicians in that actual day were really playing. Sometimes what the composer intended never really came out in the recording studio and sometimes different changes get kind of codified in the tunes throughout the years. It's important to know all of your options because if you go to a jam session you don't want to be blindsided by someone just playing different changes. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. It means that there are multiple solutions to this harmonic problem and maybe one's more popular and maybe for some tunes we actually just have different options. So after this bridge section, we're going directly back to our first A section, and that will end the tune for us. So let's give this all a shot together, do a little play along with the bridge, and we'll, we'll really be able to hear how that, uh, that setup into the double time coming out of the verse really comes to fruition. One, two, three, four. I'm as happy as a king Feeling good and everything I'm just like a bird in spring Got to let it out It's my sweetie, can't you guess? Wild about her, I'll confess. Does she love me? Oh my yes. 
That's just why I shout Everybody loves my baby But my baby don't love nobody but me Nobody but me Everybody wants my baby But my baby don't want nobody but me That's plain to see She's got form life lean and shiny So I ain't talking green Nobody but me.